Um, hi, I'm Peter Eastdown. I, I, I'm an indie. I do everything myself. I'm, um, I have paid for a little bit of artwork over time, but um, I do all my programming at night between 10 and 1 in the morning um, or on the train or lunchtime. Um, and this is just a little little spiel of about a, an experience I had a couple of weeks ago when I launched a game that I just finished doing um, near the end of last year. And uh, I've got a couple. Of, I've got. I guess I've got ten apps in the App Store, two of which have actually been worth having in the App Store, um, which are edu kids' educational apps like Times Tables and Addition, that sort of thing. And they've done okay. Um, when I first went into this, it was more for fun, and maybe if I made 50 bucks a month, I'd be happy. Um, those two apps have actually done a lot better than that, um, which has surprised me. Uh, but I've spent a lot of time, once they started doing OK, I thought, oh, maybe I can make them do better. Um, so I've tried different ideas and different techniques to try and improve my sales. Um, and. Uh, and the most recent one is to try setting something free, which is something I've avoided as much as I possibly could. So this is just about what happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've got, as I just said, I've got two two fairly simple apps. The, the icons you're seeing there are probably about version 10 of the icon. Um, I'll just go through this fairly quickly. They've also done okay. They haven't done. They haven't made masses of money. They've been, they've paid for some furniture and and holidays and stuff like that. Um, times tables. I've got these are just paid sales. They don't include any um, promotional free type things I've done. Which for times tables I've actually never set it to free. I do have a light version of it, which does maybe a hundred downloads a day, um, with some with maybe a couple of apps a week out of that. Um, the, ma the addition and subtraction has done nowhere near as well. Um, time stable seems to be there's like almost 400 apps out there that teach you how to do times tables. Um, it's amazing how many people seem to need to have. Um, I did it because I saw a need at the time, and uh, it's paid off. Um, when I first put it out there, it was just over the 20 megabytes, and I didn't understand anything. Um, and I found it in trying to promote it, I found a community called Moms with Apps, um, run by a lady called Lorraine Ackerman. That's evolved into Parents with Apps now, and it's a fairly active set of um, developers from all around the world that write family-friendly apps. Um, for all sorts of platforms. And what I get the most out, out of it is the community and everyone is willing to help. There's a couple of very bright individuals. There's one fellow that, um, uh, John McCann, on the Cocoa Heads forums quoted recently, uh, Pierre, uh, I can't give his surname, from Le, Le Escapadu, I think is the pronunciation. He, um, He's making like 200 grand a, a month, uh, a year, from his Montessori-based apps. And he got that kick from a Wall Street Journal article back in 2010, I think, that was out of the blue, and that set him in motion. And now he's doing extremely well out of it. Um, so the things that I learned from these people I've, over the last 18 months, I've tried all sorts of different things like changing the icon lots of times. I've played with keywords that can be disastrous. Um, changing the app name because for a while. For most of the time, the app name, you've got your primary, you've got your keywords, your 100 characters of keywords, but you've also got the app name because the, ser the search engine looks at the app name first and then it looks at the keywords. It never looks at the iTunes description, the app description. So. If you've got a nice long app name with lots of words in there, you can you can get a. We tend to call them super keywords, and they give you a real boost in the search. Um, for a really horrible one or two months last year, they 
awesome. prevented that from working. And so people that ha were doing really well from search um, suddenly went down and we're not doing very well at all. Um, but they seem to reverse that after a couple of months. Um, in fact, they, they changed it so that if you had a word in your app name and didn't, didn't have it in your keywords, you were penalised. Um, so we, there are a raft of people putting out updates just so that they could change keywords and change app names to try and get into that top 10 or that top 25 because that's, that was before they killed the App Store um, with the new UI. Uh, improving screenshots, are, well I've tried that, I'm not, very, I'm not an artist so I haven't done very well on that one. Um, uh, improving the copy in the app, in the app description apparently that first paragraph is, a, is what gets people to look further. Um, again I've had limited success with that but that's because it's me. Um, because I was working with the education and, and kid friendly, family friendly thing um, with these two math apps in the States there's been a lot of talk about um, privacy, uh, making sure kids aren't the apps aren't taking data from kids or, and, and, and recording things that um, they shouldn't be. And so there was an attempt, and some people are still doing it, but in the screenshots in, that, in iTunes, they would, would put a, uh, some graphics there to, to say this has in apps, this takes data, uses Flurry, that sort of thing, to declare up front what the app was doing. Um, I actually found that penalised sales. It actually got in the way, even though I was saying I don't do any of this stuff, it still seemed to penalise, so I've ended up taking that back out. Um, and some more things, uh, I've tried, pa tried paid advertising on some blog sites with no luck. Um, I think it depends on where, how much you're willing to pay, which sites, whether your icon's really good, and so on. App reviews, are, app reviews I've found to be, even a positive review has mixed results. Um, like, depends on where, and I think that's, that's where I'm sort of heading with this. Um, it's not what you know, it's who you know sort of thing. Um, I added classroom specific functionality to one of the apps last year just before the start of the US school year to try and get some um, volume purchases happening within schools. That, for me, that didn't work that well. Um, there are other people that are getting a lot of, lot of traction out of um, that, but again, you, educational sales don't affect your rankings um, in the same way that non-educational sales do, um, which is a real pain. Um, now the final thing I've tried, certainly with times tables, was setting it free, which I really don't like doing. Um, and, and despite my, the way I started where I thought, oh yeah, it'd be nice to make a little bit of pocket money, I actually really enjoy making a lot more than just pocket money. Um, I don't do that yet, but I'm, it's starting to happen. So I was sort of resolved to go free. Now, in parallel to this, I also, realised that to increase my income, even if I couldn't increase it through the apps I've got in store, I thought I need to get more apps in the store. So mid last year I started writing a game which I've called Claustrophobic, or my, rather my 11 year old called Claustrophobic, um, which is just a, it's an arcade game, it's an endless roller where you're rolling the, screen, rolling the ball around the screen, the walls come in over time so it gets harder to roll within the space. It's a good, it's a good concept, oh I think so. Um, and there's a lot more that I can do with it. Um, but I, what I wanted to do, in addition to just adding another app that gave me two sales a day, um, I actually wanted to get a. I've heard, you hear, we all hear the stories of launches that do phenomenally well. Um, whilst I wasn't expecting that, I wanted something more than 10 apps on my, 10 sales on my first day. 
So I was trying to, I tried to come up with a way to do that. And um, where, where am I? The educational, the app Friday, the, sorry, the organisation that, that I sort of work with, with these educational developers have a, a thing every Friday morning at 10 a.m. called App Friday. I don't know whether everyone knows about it. I, I know that a lot of parents do and a lot in the educational area they do. Um, every week they get people like myself to say, OK, I'm going to discount or I'm going to set my app to free for that day. And then they'll promote it on a grid via Facebook, uh, which has something like six or 7,000 likes. Um, so that, and it's amazing how many people are willing to wait a week or a month or six months for an app to go free rather than spending a buck. Um, and so when the apps go free, they're, they're there and they'll download it. And I, I hear stories of people getting thousands of downloads uh, of these kids' apps um, and then getting a bit of a boost for a week or so. So, and I've, I had resisted doing this for the Times Tables app because it had always been a fairly stable seller. Um, whereas the, the math, the addition, subtraction, was it never did very well. I thought, oh, it wouldn't hurt. So I did try that about July last year and I got 600 downloads that day, which, and then no boost afterwards. So I thought, well, it wasn't really worth the effort. Now I'm trying to get this app into the store. I got, the, got it approved and I wanted to get a boost. Um, I had paid for artwork to be done this time around. Previously I used Ray Wendell Lich's wife's heart artwork for the math apps, and which really worked fairly well for me. Um, so this time I'd actually spent money on an app for the first time. Um, and and yeah, unlike Dan earlier on, I have no budget. Um, so I've done everything, spending as little, po little as I possibly can. Um, so to, to try and get a boost, what I did was I actually set both of my apps to free for the 18th of January. Um, and one of the, the driving things for that this time um, um, was I had to work out how to market it um, because I didn't. I don't. I hate marketing. I hate. No, I like writing the programs and like getting them going, and I like seeing people using them. But I, I don't like having to market them. So, what I did, I sent out heaps of promo codes. I kept. I didn't release it straight to store immediately. I would send out heaps of promo codes to places like App, App Advice, GameSpot. Game Zebo or masses of them. Um, it's the first time I've used so many promo codes in such a short space of time. I got nothing back except, oh, we have advertising options. Um, and some of them were like $5,000 for a little square for a week. And that just doesn't come anywhere near close. So I got my apps on the grid, on the grid for the 18th of January as, as free. I thought, well, I'll get a bit of a boost and I'll try and cross promote. But at the same time, just coincidentally, the group that set up this app Friday also set up a relationship with App Advice, where if an app on their grid on this App Friday grid met some of their rules, then App Advice would post links to those apps on their own website. Um, oh, this is yeah. Sorry, I'm a bit ahead of myself. So I'm, no use, I'm not used to doing this. Um, that's a f f brief summary of what, what happens on App Friday. Um, so whilst, it, whilst our apps are actually on sale for the whole day, they promote it actively on a Facebook page for an hour and they get parents and teachers and so on to, to interact. Um, and, and it helps with educational and volume purchases. And thanks to Apple we're making that available outside the US now, we're starting to get them in Australia and other places as well now. So both math apps were in for the 18th. I set them for two days to make sure that I got all of the American 
um, fr Friday and a bit of Saturday to just to make sure because um, I didn't want for it. it. It was completely up to App Advice whether they took my apps or any of the, the apps. They'll take it. They look at the apps. They look at whether we met their criteria. And um, and these are the criteria that App Advice set. And so I tried to make sure I fit, and and I did. Uh, and f lucky for me, they chose both of them, um, and they put them up. Um, I would have liked to have got my new game, Claustrophobic, on there as well, but it's not a family-friendly app. It's got social ne social integration, it's got in-app purchases and so on, and that's sort of generally frowned on in that community. Um, but I was hoping that by getting a bit of a boost with the math apps, I'd get more visibility and that would help with the launch of my own with, with the game, since I didn't have the resources to go through the other channels like what Dan did. So what happened, as soon as the US woke up, um, the rankings started going nuts. Um, it was just amazing to watch. And for about 24 hours, the two math apps held the number four and number six spot in education in the US, which was phenomenal. Um, admittedly, this was free. So this is from AppViz. Thank you, Sean, for AppViz. It's been brilliant. Um, this is the lead up to it all, it all happening and as you can see I wasn't really ranking very well anywhere. I ha was having a few sales. Those two peaks are educational sales so they didn't affect my rankings at all. Um, nice to have though. Um, and then the event. So it's, um, it's and that's because I'd, I'd already tried the blue is math plus minus. Now previously, math plus minus had gone free one day on, on the Facebook page and I got 600 downloads. This time, um, uh, 17,000 downloads on, over those two days, I think it was. That comes up on the other side. And remember, these are math apps. These aren't exciting. Uh, the other thing that killed me a little bit uh, with my game was Temple Run 2 where it's released the same day. That didn't help. Um, so the next day, after it went, it went back to paid, and this is what App Figures told me, I was, it's just astounding how quickly something that, that 50,000 people are, are willing to download for free, um, as soon as it's not free, no one wants to download it. It just astounds me. Um, and I attribute the, all the downloads to app, those two links on App Advice, which aren't easy to find. For me, that, if I go to the App Advice website, I don't know how to find that page. I was able to find it because I had a link to it. So I don't know how everyone else does it. Um, I had hoped that I'd get some... So I've got to keep up with two screens. Um, I had hoped that claustrophobic would get a boost. I got 4,000 downloads over, those, over the first two days for free. Um, and, oh no, over, the, over about seven days. It stayed free for seven days. I got about 4,000 downloads. The IAPs, unfortunately, were too hard to find for people um, or they just don't want to play it. Um, so the game hasn't worked out so well, but the promotion of the two math apps has done really well. Um, instead of ten or eleven dollars maybe a day, I'm getting it was I'm now getting thirty thirty plus dollars a day, um, and so I'm fairly content with that as an outcome because it's paid for what I did spend on claustrophobic. Um, it, but it. What amazed me was how little it takes to get a lot of traction. Like I've got, okay, so maybe half of that 50,000 people aren't actually using the app. Maybe they just downloaded it because it was free. 
Maybe they're not interested in those two math apps. But if, and maybe I'm being gener even generous with half, but if only half of them are actually using it, I've got 25,000 extra people out there that even know that they exist. And I can't help feeling that that has gone a long way to the increased sales. Um, it's worth being aware of these sites and some of the services that they provide, some of the, most of them will want money if you want them to do something. You can always submit a tip to all of them and they all say, oh, we always read them all and we always respond. But um, they've got a strange definition of the word always. Um, so I've not had one response. Uh, app advice have, because I've nagged them um, and I've told them about the success. They, I'm starting to get a bit of dialogue from them, but that hasn't gone as far as taking a look at my app or, or even grabbing the, the promo code. Because I, I don't know, there's a, there's a couple of services. There's one, Tokens, I think, that allows you, you to put your promo codes in so you can see whether they've been used or not. There's another one that I use called Redeem Now, um, which is put together by one of the educational community that I work with. Um, and so I'm able to see which promo codes are taken and which ones aren't. And um, to date, I think Slide, Slide to Play is the only site that's actually used one of the promo codes I sent out, which is a bit disappointing, to be honest. Um, and these are just some links to the play, things that, that you may, if you haven't been in the, the educational or family friendly type environment, you may not have been aware of. Um, at the Facebook page is, is there all the time. It's most active during that 10 o'clock session, San Francisco time on Friday. Um, the download center is what you'll see that's where they'll, they'll make it obvious which apps are available for, at the discount that day. Um, and they're all just, a lot of them are just kids stuff and educational stuff. Um, but there are, all, surprisingly enough, there's a lot of interest in, in that, certainly from parents and, and educators. Um, <coughs> of course, there's my website. And down the bottom, I've put a bit LY there, link there that's the link to the page that AppAdvice put my links on. It's yay long, um, and I figured if anyone did want to look at it, it would be a lot easier to get that way. And that's it.